Hi, I'm Conrad Houghton. This is lecture 15 in the probability and combinatorics section of our unit mathematics for computer science A. Uh, today, a brief introduction to continuous distributions. So, uh, discrete distributions, we've seen lots of those. Uh, the sample space is made of discrete objects. Maybe the numbers 1 and 2, maybe the letters A, B, C, and D, or maybe all the natural numbers or all the positive numbers. Uh, one thing we learned was that uh, moving from uh, finite and discrete to infinite and discrete uh, is reasonably harmless. It doesn't change very much as long as the series you need to calculate the expected values converge, you can still uh, calculate the expected values. Not much changes. The machinery is the same. We'll find it's quite different for uh, continuous distribution. So that's cases where the uh, sample space is made up of, for example, all the real numbers between 0 and 1, all the real numbers from 0 to infinity, all the real numbers, some subset of the real numbers or indeed uh, continuous numbers or um, some larger dimensional space. The key thing is that it, it's continuous rather than discrete. Not individual objects, but uh, a continuum. So uh, imagine uh, an example of the weight of a newborn baby. So newborn baby is born and, uh, and you weigh the newborn baby. People always do. Uh, for example, or as an example, let's say that the average weight of a newborn baby is 2.75 kilograms. I think that's a little bit high, but uh, let's just imagine that's the average. And imagine that we want to find an average size baby. So uh, here's, a, here's a newborn baby, it's been weighed. And if we look at the scales, it's pretty promising. So we were trying to work out the probability of finding an average size baby, and here we found an average size baby. So, you know, you'd keep doing the experiment, you'd count the number of them that were average size, you know, that meet, met the exact definition of average, and you'd work out the probability of an average size baby. But of course, if we um, zoom in on, on the scales, we can see that it, it's not actually an average size baby, it's just a tiny bit below. So the back line I've drawn in, I've measured it, and I've worked out exactly where 2.75 is, and this baby is just a shade beneath 2.75. And indeed, uh, and no matter how many babies you measure, if you measure precisely enough, none of them are going to be exactly 2.75. They might be 2.76 or 2. 750001 or 2.750000001 but the probability of finding a baby uh, with the precise weight 2.75 uh, is zero what we mean when we say finding a baby with an uh, with the weight 2.75 is that we mean the probability of finding a baby uh, with that weight to within some um, so, some precision so what we'd really be looking for might be uh, what's the probability of finding a baby between 2. 745 and 2.755 or 2.7495 and 2.7505 or whatever. It, we, there's a possibility or a probability that we can assign to finding a, a baby whose weight is in a range around 2.75 and that's not going to be zero. That's the, an object that we can deal with that makes perfect sense. The thing that doesn't make perfect sense is uh, the idea of the probability of finding a baby with a precise weight. So in the case of uh, discrete probabilities, we had the probabilities of events, and then with the, uh, the what we uh, call the mass function or the probability mass, which is the probability of individual outcomes. That object is, is, is different in the case of uh, continuous probabilities because the probability of an individual event doesn't really make any sense because uh, an individual event uh, in a continuum is defined with infinite precision. You know, there's an infinite number of decimal places and you're never going to find uh, that exact result, just something to within some tolerance of it. And so we do a slightly different machinery and the machinery is as follows. We have what's called the, the, the the distribution function, or more commonly called the, the cumulative. And the cumulative is a way of describing, um, it's a machinery for describing, that we can use to describe probabilities on the continuum. Uh, f of x is the probability of finding uh, a, a, a value of your random variable x, so we're dealing with random variables here, I should have said. It's the uh, f of little x is the probability of finding um, of the random variable uh, having value uh, less than x. In a continuum, less than x and less than or equal to x is actually the same, for exactly the same reason that we were talking about before. The probability of precisely the value x uh, is zero. So that's uh, one of the two objects that we commonly use to describe prob continuous probabilities. The other is the so-called density function. Um, the density function, I think we use the density function more, uh, but the probability function, uh, or the, the yeah, cumulative function, that's the advantage of always, or more commonly being defined, uh, so sorry, I should say the density function is the derivative of the uh, of the cumulative. So if this is the cumulative of x, uh, little f of x, the density function is the derivative of big f of x. Or, or put the other way, um, again, 
assuming, making assumptions about the nicely behaviveness or the well behaviveness of these functions. So we're going to deal in a sort of engineering world where we're not going to worry too much about, um, you know, peculiar functions, peculiar possible uh, cumulative functions, peculiar possible density functions, and this whole issue of um, what happens when these functions are pe are, are peculiar, or, or whether we can, uh, you know, necessarily integrate the uh, density function to get the um, to get the cumulative. That, that's a that's a, a rich part of mathematics called uh, measure theory. Here we're just assuming that the, that everything is fine. In other words, the uh, it makes a lot of sense to define this thing. It's 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 the probability of an event, the event of big X being less than little x. Uh, and we're calling that cumulative. We take the derivative of that. We'll look at an example in a second. We take the derivative of that. That's the density function. And that's the thing that's a bit like the probability mass, uh, the probability of an individual outcome that we we're talking about before. But with the caveat that it's not the probability, um, uh, f of x isn't the probability of x. It's the rate at which the cumulative is increasing at x, which is, you know, almost the same thing, but not quite. And then uh, by the um, the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, conversely, uh, f of x, big F of x, the cumulative, is the integral of uh, the density from minus infinity uh, to, to x. And so you, you get that by integrating this at both sides and um, making some assumptions about the uh, properties. So we're assuming that uh, uh, f of, big F of x, the cumulative, goes to zero as x goes to minus infinity, as it should. The probability of big x being less than minus infinity um, should of course be zero and it should go to zero uh, as x heads towards minus infinity. Um, of course uh, f of x could be could have what we'd call compact support. It might be uh, zero outside of some finite range. It might We might be dealing with a situation where big x won't take values outside zero one, in which case this would be zero most of the time and we can restrict these integrals. We'll look at examples uh, later on. But this is, this, this is the idea. We start off with this well-defined thing, the uh, cumulative, the probability that the uh, random variable takes a value less than little x. If we take the derivative of that, that's that's the rate at which the cumulative is increasing. As I said, it's the thing that's a bit like the mass function, but um, but only a bit like it, uh, because the mass function is the probability of an outcome. This isn't the probability of little x. It's the rate at which the cumulative is increasing at little x. Uh, and then conversely, uh, we have a formula for uh, the cumulative in terms of the density. Yeah. So again, uh, just to note, of course, the probability that x lies somewhere in its range has to be 1. So the, uh, the limit of uh, this should go to 1 as little x goes to infinity. So the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x, big f of x is 1. Uh, and put another way, that says the integral of the density, if the density is defined, is 1. Uh, so uh, what sort of... Um, well, how do we use this to work out probabilities? Well, typically, we want the probability that x lies in some range. That was the example we saw with the baby. We'd like the probability that the baby's weight was in uh, some range around the average. Well, that's just the, you know, by the nice properties of integrals or, um, well, by the properties of probability, the probability that x lies between x1 and x2 is a probability that x is less than x2 minus the probability that x is less than x1. Uh, and again, we're not being very careful about the greater than and the greater than or equals. Uh, since everything is defined under integrals, it doesn't make any difference. But uh, obviously from th uh, these two uh, objects here, we know them in terms of the cumulative. This is the cumulative of x2, this is the cumulative of x1. So the probability that it lies in the interval is the difference of the cumulatives, and by the, prob by the properties of integrals, that's just the integral of the density between those two values. And so the probability, this is the most common the way we use probability density is the probability that x lies in the interval x1 to x2 is the integral from x1 to x2 of f uh, of y dy. And I, I, I used f here just because we had other p's knocking around and sometimes it got confusing, but very uh, typically uh, little f will be, will be called p. And the cumulative is often called c just because that stands for cumulative. So here is an example with uh, constant density. Um, we're only going to do a couple of examples of continuous probability distributions. There are, of course, many prob probability distributions, but this is a, one of the simplest ones. It basically says that the probability of having a value less than uh, minus 1 is 0, and then um, there's uh, nothing changes. There's a uniform probability uh, between minus 1 and 1, and then it's 0 after you get to 1. And uh, this is the way we write that with this curly bracket. Uh, that's how you define a piecewise defined function. It's, it's a half between minus 1 and 1 and 0 outside of that. And if you integrate that, of course, this is width uh, 2 and height a half, so the integral there is 1. Uh, 
and uh, we can do the we can do the um, integral of that uh, to to x reminds of into x to get the uh, cumulative. So this is what the cumulative looks like. The uh, it's there's no probability less than minus one, and it goes up steadily until it gets to one, and then it stops going up steadily. So the rate at the which the cumulative, which the uh, the density, uh, sorry, which the probability increases, is constant uh, between um, minus one and one. Uh, some more properties uh, of, of the cumulative. Uh, so uh, uh, the probability of f of x, or sorry, the probability that the uh, big X is less than x is greater than the probability it's less than y if x is greater than y. Uh, so um, you know f of x is greater than f of y if x is greater than, than y. Uh, and, and what that tells us is that this cumulative is a, is a monotonically increasing function. It can't go down. I mean, the cumulative is the amount of probability. So the bigger the range, the, the, prob the bigger the probability, or at least the probability can't uh, go downwards. And that tells us that uh, p of x, well, which I've been calling f of x until now, the derivative of uh, df dx has to be uh, non-negative. So this um, this probability density, which, like I say, I was calling little f, and now I've decided to call by the more common name p of x, uh, that is um, it, that's a non-negative quantity. Um, however, this is something you should bear in mind. Uh, it, it it's not bounded by one. So the obviously the probability for an outcome in the discrete case was bounded by one. But here uh, we know that the integral, um, the probability that x lies in some interval. That's the integral of uh, the density over that interval. That has to be less than one because that's an, basically an event, and all events uh, must have probability less than or equal to one. And so any integral of the density must be less than or equal to one. But that doesn't mean the density itself has to be always less than or equal to one. Here, here's an example uh, of a constant distribution um, between zero and a quarter. So uh, this is a uniform distribution that has constant density, piecewise constant density, at zero outside of this interval, uh, zero to a quarter. Um, decided to go back, go back to calling this f now. And, and outside of that interval, it has value 4. Uh, here's a picture of it. You can see that uh, this is uh, with the quarter and height 4. So this does have, have integral 1. But uh, it, it has a value greater than 1 uh, for a short enough amount of time that that doesn't change the basic rule that the integral of this object between any two points has to be less than 1. But the density itself can, can be briefly greater than 1. So that's uh, the continuous probability density. Uh, it's um, uh, and, 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 the, um, uh, and the cumulative, they are the uh, machinery we use for describing uh, continuous distributions. And in, in, uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about expected values for uh, continuous distributions in the next lecture, and then after that about the, the most commonly discussed continuous distribution, which is the Gaussian. Thank you.